What's up guys, Sharnice here, and I'm here to tell you about what you should expect from Term 1 at SGU. First things first, I passed the turn. After having finished Term 1 of medical school at SGU, I figured that I would make this video to let people know what they should expect from Term 1. So this video will be pretty detailed, and I will try my best to make sure that I bookmark the timestamps for anything that you're looking for so that you can navigate this video easier. But yes, if you are eager to know about what you should expect going into your first term at SGU, this video is for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of just gonna go through a typical week at SGU and expound on all of the different elements that go into the week. So the first thing is that when you start at SGU, um, especially remotely, it kind of seems unreal. Like it kind of seems like you don't know what's going on <laughs> or what to expect. Um, so they will send you an email before classes start. Um, if you are in a program called AEP, and that is the Academic Enhancement Program. And AEP meet, um, I think they meet once a week. Um, if you know more about AEP, please correct me if I'm wrong. But they meet about once a week, and in AEP they have facilitators who kind of go through the material for the week with the students and they um, also do practice questions and they may have group discussions, I think, but um, basically it's the academic enhancement program and it is a tool for students to get a better understanding of the material and also to get um, extra practice questions. Extra practice is always a good thing. So that, if you're in it, it's a helpful program. So that's AEP. And there's another program called ITI. I do not know what ITI stands for, um, but basically ITI is, um, is a review session after each lecture for the day. I believe ITI is led by the professors who taught the lecture, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, um, but ITI and AEP are different and they will place you in <laughs> either AEP or ITI, um, depending on their criteria. <laughs> All right. So in a typical week, this is the rundown. So the first thing is lectures. A regular day, we have um, two 50 minute long lectures. So um, this year, our lectures were from 10 a.m. to 10.50 and then from 11 a.m. to 11.50. And they might be taught by the same professor. They might not be taught by the same professor. And lecture is kind of different for everyone. I use lecture as a time to um, pay attention to lecture most of the time um, and try to grasp what I could from the lecture. And then after lecture, I would post read. So um, at SGU, we do like, well, most people will pre-read their lectures, attend lecture, and then post read their lecture as like their study time. We'll talk about that maybe in another video. But um, but yeah, some people pay attention to lectures. Some people don't find that it's helpful to pay attention during lectures and they use it as study time. So you'll kind of get a feel for it after like the first few lectures, what is really working for you and what will help you learn the material best. So that's a lecture. So directly after lecture, then you would have ITI. Then we have small group. So SGU will assign you to a small group and it's usually a group of like 10 to uh, 10 to like 14 students maybe and we all get together at about once a week or sometimes for the week we won't have small group it just depends on the schedule and um so we'll meet and then we have a facilitator who guides us through the small group so the small group usually comes with assignments sometimes they are um, professionalism assignments um so the group will get together and we'll have a a case or a situation that they gave us and we will talk about how to be, um, you know, how, how we would be in the professional setting, what we expect from doctors um, in the professional setting. The second type of small group we have is um, like um, anatomy and physiology. So those kind of cover a range of things. 
um it could be they could give us like worksheets where we have to implement the the concepts that we learned for that week as it pertains to certain cases that they gave us um sometimes it could be we discuss and watch videos of how to do physical exams um so stuff like that and then the third type of small group are the um histology the histology small group so histology is a bigger thing than i would like it to be <laughs> in medical school and basically we have like all these histological slides and we have to identify things on them and so in the small group we come together and we present slides to each other and by the end of the term um we learn how to like present histological slides which is kind of cool but it's also like kind of stressful <laughs> it's really helpful especially when it comes time for the exam because when you do have exams you will have histological slides that you need to identify so being able to discuss in the small group and really learn um how to analyze histological slides in the small group comes in handy come time for the exam so that's small group small group runs for about an hour and 45 minutes and like I said, it's usually about once a week. Sometimes we do have small group twice a week. It really depends on the schedule. Sometimes we don't have it at all um, in the week. Your small group is really going to help you through the semester. In most cases, my small group was really good at sharing resources with each other, asking each other questions when we needed clarification for things and just having overall discussion. So I really enjoyed being with them. Hashtag the alchemists. <laughs> the next thing we'll talk about are IMCQs. Those are multiple choice question sessions. And in order to get points for your multiple choice question session, you have to get over 50% of the questions correct. And they're usually average around like 14 questions for each session and can work with your small group on those IMCQ sessions. So um, IMCQs happen again maybe about once a week sometimes we have like four imcq sessions in a week sometimes we have none sometimes we have one sometimes we have two so again it's like one of those things that varies with the schedule but imcq sessions are a thing i really like imcq sessions because they give you those extra practice questions one thing i will say about medical school like you can you can stare at your books all day you can make your notes you can stare at your notes all day but doing practice questions is really going to help you in terms of preparing for your exams and also um, finding out your deficits and really understanding concepts that you think you knew from staring at your notes. So um, those are the IMCQ sessions and they're about 50 minutes long. Lab. Okay, so we do not start having lab until our second module, which is the MSK, musculoskeletal system module and lab is pretty cool i really liked doing lab virtually i've heard some very <laughs> concerning things about anatomy at sgu in person but i think virtually is I mean, I never experienced it in person, but I think virtually was um, a better option because we were all able to see the cadavers from the comfort of our homes and we could see it clearly. And they had they had a system going on where they had like two different cameras and it was it was really cool. I liked the lab sessions. I think the lab sessions were also an hour and 45 minutes. Um, those don't happen as frequently. I think we had maybe five labs total four or five labs total um and yeah you just have to pay attention to labs and watch those lab videos that they provide for you um so that when you do your lab practical exam at the end of the term you'll be ready for that but um yeah lab was good i will say that the only downfall about having virtual lab and virtual anatomy is that you won't you don't have um the same access to the lab as you would in person i know that in person some people will go to like open hours in the cadaver lab and look at structures um in order to be able to understand and identify them better um for the lab practical exam but um all in all lab was pretty good virtually so yeah that's lab not, not very stressful just like attend lab oh all of these sessions you do have to be on zoom um and your camera has to be on unless they tell you that it doesn't have to be on so lecture is the only thing i think where you don't even have an option for your camera to be on because it's a webinar so everything else small group 
and lab your um and sim lab which i'm going to talk about next your camera has to be on for imcqs it's also a webinar so you don't have to worry about your camera being on on zoom sim lab is kind of like a small group so we actually only had about two sim labs for this term and basically they give you a case before the lab about a patient and you meet with this patient i forget what um what like software or whatever it is that they use but you um meet this patient in person and then you have the opportunity to go through the history and physical and all that stuff and um i think the sim labs were only like an hour long maybe less maybe 50 minutes long and again those were pretty low stress um you just kind of show up and discuss with your facilitator the questions you think are pertinent to ask this patient and they're not expecting you to like be really advanced at this stuff because we're just in term one we're just kind of getting like a feel for how we even like approach patients <laughs> so yeah that's sim lab um it doesn't happen often like i said there are only two for the term so yeah the sim labs are also helpful when it comes to our um, OCEX exam at the end of the term. It's basically um, a physical examination exam and it just focuses on everything we've learned in terms of how to conduct a physical exam, how to greet your patient, and how to carry out um, special exams as well. So like cardiovascular exams, respiratory exams, things like that. Some other things that I want to talk about, which are not directly in the curriculum, but they are very helpful for um, SGU students, are DES groups. So there are groups of students who take the time to create very helpful resources for students. So if you are part of your school's Facebook group, you will hear a lot of people talking about different DES groups and they are on, um, and most of them are on Facebook. If you end up joining a DES group or many DES groups, you will find that a lot of people have created practice questions, practice tests. I've compiled lots of tips to help people get through the term. So DES groups are super helpful. I won't name the DES groups in this video, but once you do join your classes Facebook group I'm sure you'll be able to access a lot of the DES groups people will be talking about them people in your small group will be talking about them so yeah keep an eye out for those one make sure that you post read every single day post reading is basically looking at your lectures that you went to for the day looking at the slides and going through however you see fit I'm, i like to make one pagers for my post reads some people just like to annotate the lectures but post reading is very essential and it's how you're going to get that third look over your lectures and really be able to start understanding the material that was presented to you the second tip that I will give anyone coming into their first term at SGU is to practice, practice, practice. I would suggest doing practice questions every single day. Even if you only do 10 to 15 questions a day, doing practice questions are essential. At a certain point, you will notice that there will be several questions that look the same to you, several questions that are asking about the same concepts. You'll be familiar with the different ways that they can ask questions. So make sure that you are doing practice questions and not only doing them yourself, but discussing them with other people. Maybe you can have a study buddy who you meet with every day. I know I did to really go through and discuss how they were approaching the question, how you were approaching the question and, and what was really being asked. A third tip for being successful at SGU is to really stay focused. Um, medical school happens really fast. Material comes at a at a really fast speed and it doesn't stop. And um, you just kind of have to stay on top of it. Um, so just staying focused and trying your best not to fall behind. I know it's gonna happen. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna happen. It's gonna happen, but um, the only thing you're doing is medical school, hopefully. And so, you know, you have that time to catch up on the weekends, but trying not to fall too far behind and just really staying focused on keeping your eye on the prize, staying on top of your material, it's going to really benefit in the end because you're just gonna be on top of it. You're gonna know exactly what's happening. You're not gonna be behind. When you go to study group, you're going to be able to contribute when you have study groups. So, um, and you're gonna be able to know the material better that way. So 
those are my three tips. I hope I didn't forget anything about things to expect in your first term. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to message me. You can follow me on Instagram. You can leave a comment below. Um, and if there's anything that you do want to know about, you would like to see a video about, just let me know and I will be happy to do that for you guys. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with all your friends. You may have friends who are going to SGU, who are considering SGU and they just wanna know what to expect in their first term. And this is the real. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.